everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the beautiful hillside throw, which I have my sample here in front of you. Uh, now also if you head on over to richtexturescrochet.com you'll find some more photos of this blanket there. This blanket is worked in a 100% uh, cotton yarn and these are gradient yarn cakes that are created by um, someone called Panda Yarns. There's a link in the description of this video to their website so you can check it out. Now these cakes are worked uniquely in the sense that they are several strands of thread that are then worked together. It allows her to make these beautiful color changes which you can see here uh, in this blanket. As well, I have another cake that I haven't yet cracked open here, so you can kind of get an idea for it. For this blanket, I have used two five-ply yarn cakes that are approximately 1,600 yards long, and you will need those full cakes. Um, they're both called Rain on the Hillside. One is a reverse gradient yarn. Um, which I started with, with, which gave me the dark in the center and then flowed out to the light and then a gradient yarn cake also called Rain on the Hillside which was my light flowing out to the dark. You're also going to need another 800 yards of I use the color taupe. So I just took my darkest color in my gradient cake and got another 800 yards for it to work the final edging on my blanket. So those are the materials you're going to need. Again, check the description of the video for the details. You're also going to need a four millimeter crochet hook. The free written pattern can be found on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here, I invite you to subscribe, take a look around, and uh, feel free to say hello down in the comments. So our blanket today is worked in rounds and it's worked from the center out. Uh, the beauty of working a blanket from the center out is that you are going to get, at least in this case, a square blanket uh, and you can make it any size that you would like. So today the blanket that I make is approximately 56 inches by 56 inches. Um, so that's the size that my pattern is, but of course, again, you can start uh, and then stop the blanket at any point making it any size. So you're going to start by making a slip knot. When I started with my reverse gradient cake so that I could pull it from the center and start with this darkest color. Okay, so I work dark to light to dark again as far as the color scheme goes. You're then going to chain four. and then slip stitch into that first chain to make a ring. You're then set to begin round one. For round one, chain three, then work two double crochet st stitches into the center of the ring. Your chain three counts as a double crochet stitch. chain two and you're now going to work three double crochets uh, again into the center of the ring. You're going to do this a total of three more times. Three double crochets, chain two, three more double crochets, then chain two, and three more double crochets. We 
you're then going to finish off with a chain two and then join with a slip stitch into the top of the starting chain three. So you should have four sets of double crochet stitches. You're then for round two going to chain one. You will not turn your work. Chain one and into the first stitch across to your chain two space you're going to work one half double crochet. So half double crochet into that same stitch as joining and then into each stitch across to your chain two space. When you come to the chain two space, into the chain two space, you'll work two half double crochets, chain two, and two more half double crochets. You're then going to repeat that, work one half double crochet in each stitch all the way across to your chain two. Into your chain two, work two half double crochets. chain two and two more half double crochet stitches. Repeat that all the way around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. At the end of your round two, you're joining with a slip stitch into that first stitch and chain one. We're now going to work another round of half double crochet stitches. This time we're going to work those stitches into the third loop. So to find the third loop, you're going to look at the back of your work. And when you look at the back of a half double crochet stitch, you see a bar that runs uh, alongside the top bar that you'd normally work into. So this is your top bar. Underneath of that, you can see another bar here. This is your third loop. So when we're working this round, we're going to be working into this loop only. So for round three, working into that third loop, half double crochet in the first one. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit tricky to see when you join. So half double crochet into the same stitch as joining in that third loop, and then the third loop of each stitch all the way across. What it's going to do is it's going to push the tops of your stitch forward to give you a little bit of texture here. So half double crochet in the third loop all the way across to your chain two space. When you come to your chain two space, you're going to work two half double crochets. followed by a chain two and two half double crochet stitches. You're then going to continue working, working half double crochet stitches in the third loop all the way across. For this first half double crochet after the chain two space, uh, be aware that sometimes the third loop slips into that chain two space. So the first one is actually right here, if I can grab it, into your chain two space, and then uh, all the way across. So just make sure that you're working the appropriate number of stitches across each row. So uh, in the third loop, half double crochet across. When you come back to your next corner, work two half double crochets, a chain two, and two half double crochets. Repeat that all the way around join with a slip stitch in your first stitch. For round four, we're going to chain one. And we're going to begin by working a front post double crochet around the post of the first stitch. 
Now when I'm working this first stitch, I work it around the chain one and the first half double crochet. To work your front post double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook around the post from front through to back, out through the front again of the first stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two loops, and yarn over and pull through two more. That's your front post double crochet. You're then going to work a back post double crochet around the next stitch. To work your back post double crochet, yarn over, bring your hook in back of your work, and insert your hook from back through to front, around the post of the next stitch, out through the back again, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two more. That's your back post double crochet. You're going to work front and back post double crochet stitches in each stitch across to your chain two space. So I've worked a back post. Our next stitch is going to be a front post double crochet, back post double crochet around the next stitch, and repeat that all the way across to that chain two space. When you come to your chain two space, you're going to work two double crochet stitches. Chain two and two more double crochets. You're then going to repeat that all the way around. So front post double crochet around the next stitch followed by a back post double crochet and so forth to the next corner. In the next corner work two double crochets, chain two and two double crochets and repeat that around. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. For round five, we're going to work more front and back post stitches. This time we're going to work them as half double crochet. So chain one, around the first stitch, work a front post half double crochet stitch. So yarn over, insert your hook from the front of your work through to the back, out through the front, yarn over, draw up a loop around the post, yarn over and pull through all three. Your front post half double crochet. For your back post half double crochet, yarn over from the back of your work insert your hook around the post of the next stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops. So repeat that front and back post half double crochet stitches all the way across to your chain two space. When you come to that chain two space, work two half double crochets. Chain two and two more half double crochet stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around starting with your front post half double crochet around the next stitch followed by a back post half double crochet around the next and so forth all the way across to your chain two. Two half double crochets, chain two and two half double crochets into that chain two space and repeat. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round six, we're going to chain one, continue working in the same direction. We're now going to be working into our third loop again. 
and we're going to work a half double crochet into the third loop of each stitch across to our chain two space. all the way across when you come to your chain two space work two half double crochets chain two and two more half double crochets. You're going to repeat that all the way around until you come back to your first stitch. Join with a slip stitch into the first stitch. For round seven we're going to chain four and this counts as a double crochet stitch and a chain one. You're then going to skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next and chain one. You're then going to skip the next stitch and double crochet into the next. You're going to repeat this all the way across to your chain two space. All the way across. When you come across to your chain two space, you're going to work two double crochet stitches. Chain two and two more double crochets. You're then going to repeat that all the way around into your next stitch, into your next half double crochet. You're going to work a double crochet, chain one, skip one, and double crochet into your next stitch. Repeat that across to your chain two, and then into your chain two, work two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets and continue all the way around. When you come back to your first uh, chain four, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the third chain of that starting chain four. At the end of round seven, you've joined with a slip stitch into that third chain. You're then going to chain one and for round eight, you're going to work a half double crochet into that same stitch as joining and then a half double crochet into the chain one space. Half double crochet into the next stitch and half double crochet into the next chain one space. You're going to repeat that all the way across to your chain two space and your chain two space as usual, work two half double crochets, chain two, and two half double crochets, and then continue on working half double crochets in each chain space and each stitch all the way across. When you come to your first stitch, join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. At the end of round eight, this is what your work 
should look like from the beginning. You'll have a little square. Now for the rest of the pattern, we're going to repeat rounds three, which was your half double crochet in the third loop, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So repeat rounds three through to eight for a total of 11 more times. To make it easy to count, you're going to have a total of 12 of these double crochet chain one rows. So once you've repeated your rounds three through to eight 11 more times, you're going to repeat rounds three, four, five, and six once more. So at the end of your blanket, you're going to end off with a front and back post, a half double crochet round followed by your half double crochets in the third loop, and then you're all set to work the edging. So you can go ahead, work your repeats until your blankets reach that desired size, or until you finish the repeats 11 times, and then meet me back here, and uh, we will go over the edging of our hillside throw together. Once you have finished all of your repeats and you finished off on a round six, which is your half double crochet in the third loop only, uh, following your front and back post half double crochet stitches. So uh, I haven't completed the entire blanket here, but that's the beauty of working a blanket from the center out. You can work it to whatever size you'd like. Uh, so by the end of the actual blanket, I was working on my solid color cake. So what you're going to do is you're going to continue working in that solid color or whatever color you've chosen to work your edging in. And you're going to join in the first stitch of any corner with a slip stitch. You're then set to begin the edging. For round one of the edging, you're going to single crochet into that same stitches joining. Skip the next three stitches. Into the next stitch, you're going to work a puff stitch. Now, to work your puff stitch, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop, and you're going to do that four times. So there's once, all into the same stitch, twice, three, and four. Once you've yarned over, insert your hook and drawn up a loop four times, yarn over, and draw through all the loops on your hook. You're then going to chain three and work another puff stitch into that same stitch. Same way, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, draw up a loop, and do that four times. Yarn over, draw through all the loops on your hook. You're then going to chain three and repeat that puff stitch one more time into that same stitch. So you want to have a total of three puff stitches and two chain threes all into that same stitch. Just like so. You're then going to skip the next three stitches and single crochet into your next stitch. We're now going to repeat that all the way across to our next corner stitch. So skip the next three stitches work your three puff stitches separated by chain threes into the next stitch, skip three stitches, and single crochet. Repeat that all the way across to your corner. When you come across to your corner skip stitch, you'll skip your next three stitches, single crochet into that final stitch, and then you're into your corner space. In your corner, you're going to work three single crochet stitches just into that space. And that's going to bring you around to the next side of your blanket. 
you're then going to into that first stitch just as you did in your last side into that first stitch work a single crochet skip three and work your puff stitches so you're going to repeat that all the way across to the next corner in your next corner work three single crochets and then repeat all the way around your blanket when you come back to your first stitch join with a slip stitch into that first stitch and do not turn your work once you come around on round one of your edging it should look like this and you've joined with the slip stitch in your first stitch you can then chain one for round two of the edging, we're going to single crochet into the same stitch as joining. You're then going to skip over this first puff stitch and work three single crochet stitches into the next chain three space. You're then going to work a pico in the top of the next puff. So to work your pico, we're going to single crochet into the top of our puff stitch, chain three, and then back down into the base of our chain three or right into that single crochet. That's where I like to work mine. Uh, just to make it a little bit tighter, you're going to work a slip stitch. You're then going to work three single crochet into the next chain three space. Skip the next puff stitch and single crochet into the next single crochet stitch. You're now going to repeat that all the way across to your first corner. So three single crochet into the next chain three space, into the top of your next puff stitch, work a single crochet pico, so single crochet, chain three, slip stitch back down into the base of your chain three work three single crochets into your next chain three space followed by a single crochet into the next single crochet stitch repeat that all the way across when you come to your corner stitches so you've worked your three single crochet in that final chain three space, single crochet into the next single crochet stitch, and then you have single three single crochet stitches. What you're going to do into this corner is you're going to work uh, a single crochet in the next stitch, and then when you come to this middle stitch, you're going to work a single crochet and pico. into the middle stitch and then a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. That's going to bring you around your corner to your next set of puff stitches. Skip that next puff stitch, work three single crochets into the chain three space, into the top of your next puff, work a single crochet, Pico, and then three single crochets. Single crochet into that next single crochet stitch and then you're going to repeat. Repeat that all the way across to your next corner. Uh, work the same, two single crochets, single crochet pico, followed by two more single crochets in your corner, and then continue around. 
you're going to repeat that all the way around join with the slip stitch in your first stitch and that brings you to the end of your hillside throw so at that time you can then fasten off weave in your ends and block it as desired so thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial on how to make the hillside throw feel free to say hello down in the comments and i look forward to seeing all of your finished hillside throws on social media don't forget to tag rich textures crochet so until next time happy crocheting bye mm -hmm.